Amen. To all of these pastors, preachers, teachers, and gatekeepers to Pastor Harper, Lady Harper, and even though we did beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl, <laughs> it's good to be here. Even though we beat the Cowboys, it was really sweet. Watch it. <laughs> and to my mother and father, my father, they send their wishes. Amen. As we speak now, he is up preaching God's word to Amen. the people. Amen. But I would not be before you long, long today. There is a word from the Lord recorded in the book of Psalms, the 40th chapter. Amen. Psalms, the 40th chapter, verses 1. And remember, the latter part is right. the one that struck me. In Psalms, it says, I waited and waited and waited some more, patiently, knowing that God will come through for mm. us. Knowing that God will come through for us. And in the season of this pandemic, I would like to talk about it was messy, but we made it through. It, it was messy, but we made it through. Have you ever been in some rough places in your life? Places where we placed our own self in. Amen. Places we shouldn't have gone. People we shouldn't have dated. Amen. But David says God is still good in this situation. Amen. Observation number one. Embrace the process of waiting. We do this by being patient. Yeah. Have you ever learned how to wait on something when it seemed to take a long time. Amen. But when you remember what God has done earlier in your life, being patient brings with us the attitude and our ability to give God thanks anyhow. Yeah. Come on. Uh, when you go to the store and when you get in line, that, you're think, that you think is shorter, the line is shorter, but the cashier it's slower. So you make a move to get in another line, but the line is just as slow as the one that you just got out. Amen. Believe that your deliverance will come. We have to come to a place to believe that God will deliver us right on time. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 says we are troubled on every side, yet not in distress. David was one who found himself in many situations. But he wrote in Psalms, creating me a clean heart and renewed the right spirit within me. God will strengthen you while you wait. Yes, sir. But I like how you put prayer in it. You take the ER off of prayer. Sometimes you have to be in the ER room in order to wait. And if you've ever been in the hospital, you have to wait and wait until the doctor comes to see you. But in this text, David begins to get his strength back as he waited. He became encouraged. He became less aggressive. The enemy has aggravated many of us to the point that we want to break down. But I heard my father preach a sermon, don't break down before your breakthrough. Amen. This is the same David who poured out his heart in Psalms 37, 1 through 3. Fret not thyselves of evildoers, because neither be thou envious against the works of the iniquity. Mm. For they will surely be cut down like the grass yeah. and wither yeah. like, the, like the green earth. But verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good, and he shall dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be, f be fed.
fed. Yeah. Psalms 33, 20 through 21 says, We wait exceedingly for the Lord. He is our help. He is our shield. Verse 21 says, For in him our hearts rejoice. Because we trust, lean, and rely on him. Yes, sir. That's why the songwriter says, What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on his everlasting um, observation. Number two, be confident that God will be with you during calamity. Amen. God hears your plea when you call upon him. Amen. You may not think that God does not hear you, but he hears your faintest cry. Yes. And he'll answer by and by. <laughs> In accessory, that's why we don't have to go through any other person or source. God says, call on me and I will answer. That's why they wrote a song that said, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. His line is never busy. The enemy is after your peace. He is after your praise and your worship unto God. He wants to take your testimony. Don't give in to the enemy, but keep calling on the name of Jesus. God will sustain us through our faith. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We cannot allow ourselves to worry about the things we don't have control over. But we must consecrate on what we can control. You have the ability to speak something into life. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 18 and 21, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Don't faint when your request is denied. Just this just means that God is working on your behalf. All right. He has not forgotten about your prayers and petitions. Amen. He knows you by name. Put your trust in the Lord. Why? Because he has a track record. Mm -hmm. He has performed before and you just have to praise him while you wait. Yeah. Sing a new song to yourself yeah, and keep your encouragement up. Amen. Don't isolate yourself from your brothers and sisters, but engage them in your process. Find somebody who will pray for you and with you. Yeah. And then find somebody that will help you defeat the enemy. The enemy wants you to check out and depend on material things, but place your trust in the Lord. Why? Because Psalms 40 and 4 says, Blessed is the man who maketh the Lord his trust. For we do not look to the proud or to those who turn aside to false gods. God is perfecting your faith through the process of inactivity. God does this by giving you the provision while you wait. He gives you just enough to sustain you Come on. until the promise is fulfilled. That's why they wrote in her back of write the vision and make it plain. Yes, and it says, though it tarry, wait for it, it shall speak yes, sir. and not lie. Come on. What we have to do is we have to refill until God allows us to become empty. God wants us to realize that our process is not meant to destroy us, but it is to elevate our faith when it does not happen the way we want it to be. God is working on you so you can be perfected in the process. Don't give up just because it is painful. But burn down and buckle down until yeah. your change comes. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. My last observation, be confident that God will bring you out. Mm. 
Come on. The A clause in verse 2 says, He brought me up out of a horrible pit yeah. and out of the mire clay. Yeah. This passage reveals another interior of David being confident in the ability that God will rescue him in his despair. Yes, and sometimes we have to know that God is with us even in this season yeah. of Come pandemic. On. Yeah. Come on, the faith or belief that God is one who will act in a right, proper, or effective way. Yeah. Being confident in God allows us to draw upon his strength of the past victories and from others who have had similar situations. He wants us to rely on him on the fact that what we need done, he does it at the right time. Come on, come on. Come on. I believe that this is the result of an intimate relationship yeah. with God. God desires for us to grow in our faith. Even in the roughest calamities. Yes, sir. God wants us to be in a level of maturity that will bring glory to his name. Mm -hmm. It will cause us not to believe that there is one God, one faith, and one baptism. Come on. Come on. But David says God will bring us out. God has brought us out of many obstacles in our life. In Psalms 40 and 4, it says, Blessed is the one who trusted in the Lord, who does not look to the proud. We must be elevated through faith. We must wow. see the unseeable. We must oh. reach the unreachable. Uh, there was a man by the name of Dennis Redman who ran in a race. Come on. And while he was running in the race, he tore his Achilles. Come on. And while he was running, the race, they asked, do you want to stop running? He said, no, I got to finish. But while he was running, a man came and helped him along the way. And the man was his father. Yes, and when they reported him, they said, why did you not quit? Come on, come because on. he said, if I quit, I won't succeed the finish line. Come on. And is that why too many Christians stop running the race of faith. Come on, come on, come and I'm reminded of a poem that I heard. It says, don't quit. Don't quit. When things go wrong, as they seem, sometimes will, when the road you're traveling seems somewhere uphill, when the, fins are, when the funds are low and the debt is high, Amen. and you want to smile, and sometimes you have to sigh. Come on. Mm. When the curls are pressing down a bit, rest mm. if you must. Mm. But don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns. Mm. As every one of us sometimes learn, you must come to failure, come about. When, he, when his might, he thinks he has won. He must stick it out and don't give up. Yeah. Though the pace sometimes seems slow, you may have succeed to another blow. Yeah. Success is failure turned inside out. Yeah. The silver tint of a cloud of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may seem near and it may seem far. Yeah. So stick it out. And hold out. And my brothers and sisters, don't quit. Amen. God is not through with you yet. God bless you. Amen. Amen.